Coach McKinney is going to his second full season as the Texas Southern football head coach. And guys, let me tell you something. You got to understand, sometimes when you take over a program, it takes time for you to build. Yeah, Coach Kenny's been there. He came in after the 2018 season. So, yeah, this makes his – he's going into his second full season. I'm not really going to count the fall. We already know 2020 there was no football. But Coach McKinney has been making some moves. And like I said, the latest move that he made was when he got Jonathan Giles, uh, the receiver, to come over and uh, transfer into the program. Now he's about to bring this other young man into the program. Boy, I'm telling you, hey, things are starting to look very bright over there for Texas Southern. Y'all watch and see. This is your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you get all upcoming videos. Like these videos, comment on these videos, and share these videos, guys. And to all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the routine. Y'all know the drill. So this is what I want everybody to do. The new folks, as well as the leaders that's in this, that's watching this video right now, y'all make sure y'all click those notification bell buttons, subscribe to this channel, like these videos. Also, guys, tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's nothing but positive vibes over here. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. So without further ado, y'all already know what Coach going to do. He going to go ahead and tap in. Did I tell you? Follow us on social media. The links are listed down below. So now that we got that out the way, let Coach go ahead and tap on in and get into what we got going on here. Like I said before, guys, Y'all already know, Coach McKinney ain't wasting no time trying to build this program. Coach McKinney and the Texas Southern University football program is making it, they made it clear during the SWAC media press conference that they're going to be out there competing. And listen, they already know there's some things that they need to do. Coach McKinney and his staff is looking at, hey, these are some pieces that we need to get in here to bolster up our offense, to go ahead and bolster up our defense so that we can become a much competitive team against a lot of these other teams that's with that's within the SWAC and let them know, guys, that, hey, we are here to make some moves and do some damage as well. Texas Southern had a rough 2019 season, which that was Coach McKinney's first season as the head coach. I'm going to be honest with you. Yes, you got to go through your bumps and bruises sometimes just so that you can understand exactly what you've inherited. And once you understand that, you, you begin to say, you know, you begin to write, you know, write that grocery list out. OK, these are the type of players that I'm looking to bring into my program. This is the type of culture. This is the type of environment that I want to have here within my program. These are the type of leaders I need on my team. They did go what I believe uh, one and two during the spring. I mean, they really didn't have a spring season because, you know, the pandemic. We already know the pandemic caused a lot of havoc for a lot of folks. But they did they did get out there and, you know, try to do something. But with all of the games being canceled, they really didn't have a spring. But now looking towards the fall at some of these young men that Coach uh, McKinney and his staff are looking to bring into the fold, you got to understand, guys, they are building for the future. And they put, they're putting the pillars in place, like I say all the time. You want to have the type of individuals come into your program that's going to bring the culture that you want to have. And, you, and one thing you always hear me talk about as well is that a lot of these players, they they feed off of us coaches. You know, they feed off the coach. If coach is a live wire to get out there and, you know, he he walk around, he got his chest poked out, he bought that, you know, he bought that business, letting them know, hey, look, we out here talking that trash, we're going to pop off, we're going to make it do what it do. Guess what? Those are the type of players going to get. So I already know he got some game changers over there coming in, especially this one young man that we're going to talk about. Y'all already y'all have already seen the video that came out about Patrick Mahomes' favorite receiver in um, Patrick Mahomes' favorite receiver in college, which was Jonathan Giles. Guys, if y'all haven't checked that video out, go back and check it out. This two-way player that committed to the team is none other than incoming freshman Calvin Henderson, six foot two, one hundred eighty pound two-way player from Richwood High School in Monroe, Louisiana. Now, according to Max, according to Max Preps, he was ranked in the state of of Louisiana, one hundred fifty ninth at his position. Now, this young man plays receiver as well as strong safety on defense. And you know what? He's also a returner as well. I got to get this young man his props. He has a nose for the ball. Wherever the quarterback is putting that ball up at, he's making sure he's the first one to get there to it. Go up, at, go up, catch the ball at his highest point, pull the ball down and take off and continue to keep running. He's always, not to mention, he's always finding ways to make play for the quarterback, especially when he's in trouble. Check out some of this film I got for you right here. Y'all know Coach Dig. You know Coach digs into his bag to make sure that you got some clips to check out to see exactly what these players are doing and what's coming into your program. Guys, like I said, over here at Tomorrow League Sports Network, we're going to big up and salute all these young men as well as all of these different HBCUs that's out here because guess what? I said it before and I'm saying it again. They all deserve to have the light shine on them. But we're going to continue on. This young man can play on either side of the ball for Texas Southern. 
Now, Coach McKinney recruited him as a receiver. Now, going through looking at all of the defensive backs that they have currently in the program, the depth is there for that position. Coach doesn't need Henderson at that position. So receiver best fits him, not to mention he gets to work with, with Giles, get, you know, getting his route running down, understanding the different things that he needs to do to prepare himself as a top-notch collegiate player so that he's able to get he's able to do the things that Coach McKinney needs him to do as well as become a leader out there on the team so that when the newer players come in, they can start building that culture of what need, you know, what they're looking for these players to do as far as what getting themselves prepared for game day, getting them getting themselves prepared, watch a film, getting themselves, you know, getting themselves prepared for practice, things of that nature. Like I said, all of that goes hand in hand and looking at what Coach McKinney and his staff is doing right now where they're they're bringing in um they're bringing in a lot of vets, I call them vets, older players, to come in, you know, and help this program. Because you got to understand one thing, when I look at the Texas Southern roster from top to bottom, that roster is extremely young. So bringing in a few vets here and there that can help them build that culture, so they build a winning culture. That's what Coach McKinney is looking to do. Henderson being in the receivers room along with Coach Wilson, wide receivers Jonathan Giles, Keelan Davis, Osby Mitchell, and the rest of the Tigers receiving core, I'm sure he's going to he's going to gain a lot of knowledge on different things that he need to work on and do to make sure that he's a top-notch receiver in within the program, maybe within the SWAC. It just depends on how hard he's willing to work for it. Henderson having time to get adjusted to the collegiate game, and I'm and I'm not saying that he needs I'm not saying he needs any time to adjust because, like I said before. When it comes this fall, the light's going to get turned on, and I'm sure this young man's going to be ready to go. But having those vets to lean on to learn different, you know, techniques and things of that nature, you know, stuff that, you know, he may want to do to work on his game, to better his game, you know, to get that separation away from defensive backs. Guys, that, that's going to play. That's going to be pivotal in his growth as a collegiate player. And that's what you want to see. You want to see your players grow. You don't want to see them becoming the program. They end up stagnant and they're not going in the direction that you want to see them go. So with all of these vets being available to uh, Henderson, man, this could be a beautiful thing for him. But you know what? Coach Walker wishes Calvin Henderson and the Texas Southern coaching staff nothing but the best of luck this upcoming fall. And look forward to them doing some phenomenal things out there on the field, letting their opponents know that they're here to compete. And they, hey, don't take them lightly when it comes out, when it comes game time, because they might mess up and slide one past you, letting you know, hey, look, we told you in the first place, we're here to compete. But until next time, if you like the content, please like, share, subscribe. Also, you can follow us on social media. The links are listed down below in the description. And remember, be the one and lead.